Hi guys, um, so this is just a follow-up video to our first one of our first impressions of the new Anabat Scout from Titly Scientific. So we've had a lot of people ask for this second video, going through uh, actually using the Anabat Scout in the field, what we like about it, what we don't like about it, and just give a bit of general feedback um, with a lot of people actually asking, is it worth buying? So hopefully we can answer that question for you. Uh, if not, just give you enough information that you can make your own informed choice. So we've now been using the Anabat Scout for just over a week. Um, I haven't had a chance to do any videoing while I've been out doing um, surveys for commercial um, works, um, but we have taken it out and we've also taken it out you with the back group on a couple of their surveys. And we're actually out on another uh, back group event, Jersey back group event tonight. Um, so during the event, I will try and sneak away to get a little bit of playback so you can hear what it sounds like actually out in the field. Um, and I'll talk a bit more about actually how it handles in the field. Uh, just for your information. Okay, so after a week of using um, the Annabelle Scout, we haven't changed much on it at all from the settings it came programmed with. Uh, we have changed the hotkey button, which is this one here on the right hand side. Uh, all we've done is change that from memo, which it came programmed with as a standard. So you press it, make a voice memo out in the field. Uh, quite handy if you are not one for carrying around paper and writing, you're quite happy listening back to yourself in the office afterwards. We've changed this so that it switches between the two recording modes, which are triggered on zero cross sensitivity or um, as continuous recording. Uh, continuous recording doesn't have a timeout, so you have to turn it off again. So you set it, your recording for whatever length you want it to be. Uh, it's important to remember though that on the Advert Scout, there's no buffer. So it only starts recording from the moment you press to do continuous recording, unless it's obviously recording on trigger. Um, so it doesn't, there's no pre-record functionality to it. So if you've heard something, press it, don't hear it again, you've missed it. Uh, okay, so it's very low light now and bats are now active. Um, so we'll give you a sample of what the um, discount sounds like. So as you can see, nice clear recordings. Uh, we've currently got common pipistrels flying around us um, in large numbers. Uh, one thing that people might be interested in is, because it's low light, you can't even see me, but you can see the screen here. This is actually on the low light setting, which is um, what I currently prefer to use, because I find the high setting is just a bit too bright, and I'll just switch it over now. Okay, so this is the high setting, you can see it's a lot higher. A um, lot brighter and actually it's quite burning on the eyes, so this is why I'm going to use the low one, but personal preference. Okay, so these are the calls that we've just uh, you just seen me collecting uh, down at someone's pond. It's part of a back group event where we had all the pipistrels flying around, so I was just going to open these up so you can sort of see the clarity of the calls. Uh, start at the end where we know we have got bats. Okay, so here you go, um, common pipistrel, 45 kilohertz. As you can see, very nice, clear, open calls. So we're looking at this on Anabat Insight, which if you've got a Anabat Scout, Walkabout, or Swift, uh, is completely free to use all full functionality. Uh, you can use any other detector or recording from any other detector, but then you have to buy Anabat Insight for that. So I'm looking at these as WAV files um, in full spectrum, not in zero, zero crossing. And yeah, as you can see, very nice, clear calls. So I'll just cycle through a couple so you can get a look. So here you can sort of see it's picking up more than one at a time. Obviously a dominant one, but then you've got a secondary one here and you can still see the spread of calls going across it. Um, let's just play a bit of that. So this is actually the first time I've looked at these calls, so I'm just having a quick look to see if there's anything else hidden in amongst here. It's all pipistrels. Nice feeding buzz there, well captured. Even in between the normal echolocation calls. Put it 
press time, see what we've got here. So okay, so here you can sort of see we've got a common pet corn here, but we've also looked like we've got enthusiasts. Although some of those are long enough, they could actually be cool's pepper straw. Generally, I'm, I've been very happy with sort of the cool quality that's coming out. It's been very easy to identify, so you can get an idea of the different species. So here we have Natteras. And again, really nice, clear, cool capture here. Now we have been running them, the scout, alongside a walkabout you an idea. Okay, so this is the same matter as about these detectives were side by side when it was captured on the detector. Um, actually, I've got to say I prefer the cool quality from the Scout. It's much clearer, it's captured with a lot more detail. Um, obviously it could be slight variation depending in the angle of approach to the back, we can't see it, it was pitch black. I mean, it came over the top of us. But I have generally found this actually with everything other than pips, the scout has managed to capture the details, just been ever so slightly more crisp. Okay, so I've tried to give a quick overview of sort of using the detector in the field, what it sounds like in the field, a couple of the features, and how we found it when looking at analysis. Um, so I'll just quickly try and give an overview from my personal experience of using it. Um, we've generally found that we, we really like it. Um, it's not just me that's used it, I've also given it to a couple of my surveyors to use on surveys, as well as one of my other colleagues having a go with it. Uh, what my surveyors have actually said is it's actually made them more relaxed doing a bat survey because they don't, have to, they don't feel they have to worry about the bat detector at all. They've just got two buttons to push, in and out counter, uh, which log the times straight away and that's all available when you actually put it onto Anabat Insight. It comes up in an Excel spreadsheet uh, with the log times on it and counts in and out. So the fact that they're not having to um, consider which buttons to press, make sure the dials are tuned right or anything like that, they said they actually find it a lot more relaxed and they're, they're, they feel they're also learning more which I think is actually fantastic because uh, they're paying more attention to the sounds because they're not having to worry about everything else. Um, myself and my colleagues, we basically have looked at it and uh, compared to other ones, and <laughs> the easiest way to describe it is uh, idiot proof. Uh, all you've got to do is turn it on and go. Uh, there's no setting of the time because it's all done by GPS. Uh, it's all positioned, everything's self recording. So this fantastic little detector does a lot and comes in a single package effectively. Um, okay so I do try and make sure that I can find a dislike uh, or something that I, I think could be added improved on or something like that um, and on this this has got to come down to the batteries. So I think it's absolutely great it's two AA batteries you can use alkaline or you can use rechargeable it's absolutely fantastic uh, however there is no battery indicator or power level indicator so when it is running low all you get is a warning which comes up we had on one of our surveys uh, which just said power low liable to turn off immediately um, obviously they're really quick and easy to change over and as long as you turn it off change the batteries turn it on again you don't you, you, there's no data loss the counter remains exactly the same so it doesn't reset when you lose battery or turn off and it doesn't create another night folder which i thought was quite good so everything basically continues. Um, so it's something to be aware of is to check the voltage levels. If you're unsure, check, change the batteries. And if you're using recyclable batteries, uh, rechargeable batteries, uh, just make sure they're charged up before every single survey um, to ensure that you have no battery failure. Okay, so what about value? Um, so the Animat Scout has actually come in sort of as a mid-range level in between the different detectors, which um, a lot of people are using popularly on commercial surveys and other surveys, uh, with the main ones being um, the Echometer Touch Pro, but which is 360. 
or thereabouts, but you obviously need a compatible device with it, tablet, phone, whichever one you want, which brings the price up there because it's not a self-contained unit. Uh, obviously, the bottom of the price range, but still very good detector we've used is the Pearsonic. Um, absolutely fine for surveys. Really like it. we've got a couple of those as well. Uh, but it doesn't have the GPS functionality or any other sort of add-ons like back counters or anything like that. So then the Scout basically then is up against um, the Annabelle Walkabout itself and the Echelon Batlogger M. Uh, both of the latter two are well over the 1,500 bracket. So at the moment the Scout is priced on um, NHBS, which I've just checked, at £834. So it's just shy, just around half the price of a Batlogger. So you can actually get two of these for a Batlogger. Um, and the walkabout is just slightly cheaper than the Batlogger, but again, you can more or less get two Scouts for the price of either of those devices. Um, and in terms of functionality and call recording quality, I'd say they're about the same. Um, I mean, obviously, if you want something for publicity, where you want to interact more with public engagement, then something like the walkabout is much better because you've got the screen so you can show them and interact with them a bit more. Whereas the Scout is obviously simplified, but it has been designed for surveyors. Um, so it, with that purpose in, in mind, I would say it's actually been very well designed. We've really enjoyed using it so far. We're looking forward to getting our other units down to use on surveys. Um, because the sur surveyors are enjoying using them. The data we're collecting is absolutely fun, clean, easy to use. And they're also really lightweight and ergonomic to use actually out in the field. So in terms of value, yeah, I'm really happy with them.